back on trail. It's been over a year now, um, July 2019, since I did a overnight backpacking trip. Uh, so, really excited. Um, doing the first three sections of the Arizona Trail, uh, basically from southern terminus, sort of, uh, two miles from the southern terminus because uh, Trump's wall ruins everything and they closed off the trail uh, to build it but uh, two miles from the southern terminus to Patagonia um, it's about 50 ish miles 55 something like that it take four days um, yeah so haven't really been on trail in a year and a half more or less getting off the couch and this first climb is one of the biggest of the Arizona Trail. Uh, so it's Miller Peak and it is 3,000 feet of climbing in the first um, 2.4 miles. <laughs> in addition to that, um, there's one water source on this trail. It's at about mile 25. Uh, so I've got a heavy pack right now packing out like nine liters of water um, but once I get over this um, it's still gonna be a lot of hills so yeah check in a little bit later give you an idea of this hike this little mountain just behind these mountains is where I'll be ending up in Patagonia so we've got a little bit of distance cover So I'm a little over a mile from the top, Miller Peak. Oh, this is a hard, hard climb. I'm averaging around a mile and a quarter an hour, something like that. But given I have a 40 pound pack <laughs> and haven't backpacked in a long time. Um, so I think that's pretty good. It's kind of hard to believe that trees like this exist you know, three miles from the Mexico border in southern Arizona. But this is why I love the high desert. Made it to Miller Peak. I'm not actually going to the to the peak peak because I've done that before and I don't want to climb anymore. This is pretty cool. So many flowers up here in this burn area. Probably one of the coolest uh, water sources that I've seen. I wasn't actually expecting any water sources on this trail outside of the uh, lake. So I have enough water to get there. I don't need to be carrying any extra, but um, yeah, this was a nice place to... Hey bear! Holy shit. It's the first bear I've seen in a very long time. He was just hanging out in that tree. Alright, so that was fun. Um, just hiking along, took a break on a tree, and a big old bear came out of the tree. Uh, just right in front of me. So, uh, luckily it seemed to be running off pretty quick. Um, he didn't want anything to do with me, but it's uh, closing in on what I hope is going to be camp. Uh, there's a water trough up here about half a mile, and uh, I'm hoping there's water in it. Um, still got enough to get to the lake, but it'd be nice to not have to ration tonight. thing I did not expect from today was all the trees. Um, I assumed this would be you know, kind of how, how it is near us where a lot of scrub brush and desert. Um, but even dropping like 3,000 feet, I think I meant like 55. It's only about a thousand feet higher than where we live. Um, it's just been green. Uh, there's been a couple little puddles of water in here. Nothing I would drink except for absolute emergency. But another good sign that there's water. Uh, so this is a big old cottonwood tree, so they're technically invasive, but 
They are a godsend to desert hikers because they mean there's water close by. So actually I just saw and see there's still some puddles there, um, which we've had like the driest year, I think on record, uh, the driest monsoon season. So to see that there's actually at least a little bit of water down here um, gives me hope that when I do hike the full trail, I won't die of dehydration. Well, <laughs> this is what I pushed on through to, um, to hopefully get some water. Um, it's like I'm going to be dry camping tonight, but luckily I have enough to get to the lake, so no big deal. It's the one kind of good thing about here. Some good spots, and then it's barbed wire off, or part of it. Um, so seeing the bears today did make me a little bit nervous, but... Um, at least I know which side they'll be coming from, I guess, <laughs> if they do decide to come out tonight. Oh, holy shit. So, um, there was just a bear there. So, yeah, um, I don't know exactly what to do. I really should have brought my bear hang stuff. Um, but I'm going to improvise and do something. I don't, I don't quite know yet, um, but yeah. So I'm pretty freaked out right now, but um, made a ghetto uh, bear hang. I pulled some pair or guidelines off of my tent and got this up. It's not the best by any means, but hopefully at least they'll stay out of my camp. All right, in for the night, night one. Wasn't expecting to sleep well tonight because, uh, you know, first day back on trail, but having a big old bear about 50 feet from my camp really didn't yeah, I'm not gonna sleep tonight. Um, good thing is both of them that I saw today ran off very, very quickly whenever I screamed at them and yelled at them. Um, so I don't think they're used to people, which is good. Um, I did get my uh, food hung a couple hundred yards away. Um, there's nothing in the tent. I stink. Feet around the, the camp. So I've done everything I can. Um, but yeah, I just gotta stick it out. I've never been that close to a bear before. So, um, and I was worried about rattlesnakes on this trip. Alright, so that was, um, one of the worst nights I've had on trail. Um, outside of probably some icy rain in, in the high Sierra. Um, yeah. Kept, didn't get any sleep. Um, kept waking up and having to yell at every sound. Um, oh, midnight something like that had some stomach issues had to run out into the bear country in the dark and yeah that wasn't fun um so i'm gonna go check on the food bear hang and hope my food is still here so yeah the shitty bear hang actually worked um so that's good uh, didn't really think it would because I could totally get that, but at least I have food still, so that's good. They don't seem to have messed with anything. Um, yeah, because I just threw some stuff down on the ground that I forgot to put in the bag. Um, at least I get breakfast. So you can see how uh, ghetto this was. I had my extra guidelines that... Um, Help kind of expand the tent a little bit, and then I had one in the top to hang stuff, and just invented a uh, <laughs> bear hang rope. So uh, you gotta do what you gotta do out here. So um, kind of thought about it this morning. Food safe. Looked at a map, and it looks like I'm getting out of these mountains into more of the low desert. So shouldn't be a problem with bears there. Um, I decide I'm gonna try and push on the next two days um, to actually finish what I started. Um, mostly my reasoning on the PCT was you can't quit because it's hard. Um, so pretty sure these next two days are going to suck. Um, but I want to get these sections done and want, don't like the, the idea of quitting was worse than the idea of pushing through another 36 miles. So I'm going to try so just for a little bit of context. 
um, this is where that bear was. Uh, I think I literally scared the shit out of him. I just paced it off, and that's where my tent was that I was setting up when I saw him. Um, that's only, I paced it off about 50 feet, so dude was big. Um, he was standing about eight feet tall whenever I saw him, and my initial instincts kicked in and scared the shit out of him, so yeah. No wonder I didn't sleep at all last night. bear shit. <laughs> I think this one's a little less fresh. I just found something really cool. Um, so I think this is like golden hawk feather, something like that, um, which in Native American culture finding a feather um, symbolizes good luck. And uh, the bigger the feather and the bigger the bird, more luck so I'm hoping this is a good sign <laughs> for the rest of the hike uh, there's no more bears or rattlesnakes or things that want to kill me so this is the third beer can I picked up in this little stretch um, we're right by the lake so I guess people come out here and party but don't leave your freaking trash just don't do it it's easy enough to back it out so I have to carry these beer cans 30 something miles to get them out of here. Just drives me insane. Also in Leave No Trace Ethics, uh, pack out your toilet paper. Don't leave it all over the frickin' trail for people to step in your shit. Oh my God, this is pissing me off. So this is uh, more what I had in mind when I thought I'd take on this trail. Uh, keeping poles ready, keeping uh, headphones out, because I don't want to get bit by a rattlesnake. A little bit funny, so this was my route yesterday. I think I ended right about there. So it's next 14 miles uh, for passage number two. Look a little bit easier than that. <laughs> Parker Canyon Lake. Uh, this is my only water source for this 50 mile hike, uh, so I'll be filling up about 8 liters, a little more, uh, 20 pounds or so, and of course it's a steep downhill climb <laughs> that I gotta do a steep uphill climb uh, with a heavy pack again, but uh, yeah, hopefully there's no one down here, cool off a little bit, have some lunch, get some water, and then get back on trail. it to Parker Canyon Lake. Um, just jumped in. Felt so good. It's nice and cold. Um, couldn't have got here a better time because it's about what I'm down to water-wise. So I fill up another eight liters. That should get me 26-ish miles um, at least until um, the next most likely water source. Not guaranteed. So still gonna ration just in case I have to do eight liters for 30-something miles till I finish the hike. All right, all loaded back up. Um, this is a little over eight liters, maybe eight and a half. Um, definitely the biggest water carry I've done. Leaving Parker Lake, getting back on trail. It's about half a mile to get onto the trail itself. Um, can definitely tell the difference carrying water and not. Joy is hiking in the desert. I have a nine pound base weight, 20 pounds worth of water. Uh, trying to get in about another 10-ish miles today um, with the little bonus miles to get water. Parker Canyon Lake right here. Uh, that'll put me at about 17, something like that. Uh, so pretty big day. Uh, pack is very heavy right now, um, but it's the price you pay for hiking in the desert. So I've seen more animals in the 20 miles on this trail. I did the entire PCT, it seems like. There's a whole group of turkeys. We 
we got us some bonus water very exciting um this is one of the spots as i said there may be water didn't want to risk it so i brought enough to get me the rest of the way but since it's here i am refilling my bottles and drinking as much as i can so getting about an extra two liters in which is exciting all right it is about 2 30 on day two and at the base of my last big climb of this trip uh, so i've got 2.8 miles to go and about 2,000 feet of climbing not quite as bad as miller peak was uh, which was 3,000 feet in 2.4 miles but still not great <laughs> so um gonna crank up this hill with a heavy bag and then uh, hopefully it's nice easy cruisy trails for the rest of the way last couple of climbs big climbs i should say see it goes up this mountain around down that up this hill and then we'll come across the saddle this guy right here it's a little bit funny i was joking um, that i wasn't going to bring rain gear uh, because there was like basically a zero percent chance and we've been super dry but I said if i didn't bring rain gear it would rain if i did bring rain gear it wouldn't rain i was right it's raining now not enough for rain gear but it is raining just gotta make it there just gotta make it there that's the last big climb of this section. Made it up that last big climb, exhausted. Uh, did pretty good. Uh, I was trying to get up here by four o'clock. It's 4.07. So, you know, that's just a couple little breaks. So I'm gonna catch my breath, a little bit to drink. Still trying to ration my water. Um, start the long descent down. Probably hike till about five and then find a camp. Heading back down the hill, so I did just look, and uh, that wasn't my last big climb. <laughs> I have one tomorrow morning, but at least it's in the morning. Hit my 15 mile goal at exactly 5 o'clock, uh, which is when I want to stop, so that's cool. So now I'm just hiking until I find a spot to set up a tent that's somewhat flat, which is not looking very optimistic right now. <laughs> Maybe should have stopped at mile 14 and a half where there was a tent site. Well, that's not great, but it'll do. It's the only place I see it. Somewhat flat, somewhat off the trail, and uh, a little bit sheltered, so. So it is day three. Uh, last night slept way better than uh, the night before. Um, still hung my food just to be safe, but wasn't too worried about it. Uh, finally was able to get comfortable and just passed out, so that was really nice. Um, definitely hurting today. Uh, these big water carries are not fun. Um, still kind of getting my hiker legs back under me, but... Uh, I've got 22.4 miles to finish out the trip um, and in theory have until end of day tomorrow um, so don't have to push it but definitely would like to get in somewhat early on Tuesday uh, to have a break and get back and get some food and shower and all that stuff so uh, this morning Got about two miles, pretty flat. Got about two miles, a fairly steep uphill. And then I think it's pretty much downhill outside of a few bumps uh, till the end. Uh, the big concern this morning is water. Uh, so got about five liters left, but that's cutting it pretty tight to get a full 22, especially with another night um, planned so there's a potential water source in 10 miles potential water source in 14 miles and i'm just hoping one of those has something because uh, otherwise it's gonna be a thirsty two days 
there's a little tank of water here. Um, I see tons of cow shit and can visibly see stuff living in it from here. So that means basically Giardia City. Um, but at least it gives me a little hope that some of these other water sources will actually have water in them. So I see, I think I see the trail right up there. Um, this is the last big climb, about 700 feet in a mile. So not the worst thing in the world, but also still pretty tired. <laughs> so once I get over this, a couple little bumps and then all downhill from there. so much of this trip has revolved around poop. This is like the biggest turd ever seen. There's two cows over here somewhere. Um, big old boys, so hopefully they're nice. Uh, you would think that the animal that kills the most hikers every year would be something like a bear or a rattlesnake or something like that. Actually, by far, it is cows. Um, the reasoning being that uh, a lot of hiking land goes through National Forest, so cattle grazers are allowed to just kind of run their cattle around there. Um, especially on the Arizona Trail, you share a lot of water sources with cattle, um, and a lot of the time they don't like that. Uh, so if people think they're nice and they're just dumb and running around, you actually got to be really careful on cows, because uh, they'll charge you, and they're mean, and they're very big. Officially on to passage three, super cool. Um, let's see, it's my last little bit right here. Uh, pretty much all downhill, so hoping I can crank through this pretty quick. Uh, trail I've gone, we are here. A little more, and there's Patagonia. A little bit of trail magic here. Uh, somebody left uh, about maybe a liter, a little over water at the trailhead, so. Can definitely use this getting thirsty uh, i was rationing myself until I get to what's potentially a water source but this will definitely help so just to be safe because uh, i don't know how long this has been sitting out here or where it came from just getting it filtered up um, and i'll pack out the bottle because um, it won't be needed anymore but one thing i've learned the trail does provide when you need it uh, if you're good to the trail. If you're not good to the trail, uh, it'll mess you up. So pack out your trash, don't poop on trail, all of that stuff. Leave no trace, and then the trail's nice to you. If you guys look over here, right there, this back mountain here, that's Miller Peak. That's where I was about 48 hours ago. And you may not be able to see it because of the haze, but over here you can kind of see the mountain range there. That's home. That's where I live. Pretty sure that's my mountain range. Pretty cool. One of my favorite things about hiking out west is just seeing the distance you cover. It's a little after 11 a.m. and I'm seven miles in for the day, so pretty happy about that. Um, that right there was the last saddle of this trail, so from here on out I think my biggest climb is like 200 feet, uh, which is basically nothing. <laughs> uh, so cranking right along. I really feel like Arizona is a very underrated state. I mean, it's hard to see on the video, but this is absolutely gorgeous, and this isn't even like the prettiest part of the state. This is just national forest land. You go up to Sedona, Grand Canyon, like, it's just crazy. Ah, you just hear angels singing. <laughs> there's, there's water, so I'm not gonna die, which is good. Yum. Badly. This isn't the worst water I've ever drank. Arizona trail sign, arrow going that way. Arizona trail sign, arrow going that way. That way, that way. This is not helpful.
Kuwari. desert edible. Uh, this is a black walnut tree. So this is what they look like. And they've got their outer shell. Um, they've got this, let me see, this kind of squishy part on the outside. And then they've got this hard part. Let's see if I can bust this guy open. I just took a quick rock to this guy and you can see there's a walnut. So you can kind of take a little knife or something and pick out these parts. Good little source of oil, or oils, proteins, and fats. They're a little hard to process, but uh, in a pinch, may keep you alive. So, good one to know and see. It's another walnut tree. Um, what's really cool about these is the nuts, when they fall on the ground, their outer shell will rot, but their inner shell uh, won't. And bugs can't really get into them because they're so hard. Um, so if you're hiking, see these and need some extra food, they're great. Uh, we have two massive ones pretty close to the house. Apparently we're doing a botany lesson in these couple minutes. Um, so this here is a coyote gourd. Um, as far as hiking goes, it's not really that edible. Um, technically the pods are, the uh, fruits are, but they're really gross. And But the actual leaves here make a really good soap when you lather them up. So my first big ass rattlesnake. Right there. He's a big guy. Alright, so calm down a little bit from the rattlesnake. I'm about three miles. And where we're going to camp about nine and a half from the end. Uh, this little stretch has been pretty nice. Weird stuff, a lot of weird stuff. Kind of boring trail, a lot of weird stuff. Um, but it's been fun. So, finishing out this section pretty quick here. of day three and my last night on trail I actually got a good camping spot for the first time so far uh, so nice and flat gorgeous views and look at this mountain over here awesome stuff so today was a 16 ish mile day um, pretty good a lot of road walking pretty flat um, not too terrible heavy water carries a lot of weird stuff, uh, rattlesnakes, uh, turkeys. I saw a kawadi, which I've never actually seen one in real life, uh, outside of on the side of the road, dead. Um, so that was really cool. I think he was trying to eat a turkey baby, but um, still cool to see him. Um, yeah, tomorrow I will be cranking into Patagonia and finishing this up. So got a little over six and a half miles to do tomorrow. All flat, all downhill for the most part. Not worried about it at all. Got my water. Think I'm gonna make it, maybe. Hopefully, unless I get eaten by coyotes or something. So. Right, it's the last day, day four. Um, up bright and early. I think I got up about five and hiking just after six. Got a little less than seven miles to get into Patagonia and call this one done. I think one thing I've realized being out here the last couple days, um, I missed it a lot. Um, it sucks out here sometimes. Uh, there's a lot of scary moments, but uh, you know, there's no place I'd rather be. So with all the coronavirus stuff, um, you know, a through hike is not really in the future anytime soon. But I think I'm definitely going to start checking off. Um, more sections of the AZT while I can, even if it's just, you know, one weekend at a time, because uh, it's been really nice. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. 
last four miles and cranking quick. I think I averaged like 2.6 um, for that first hour and that was with some uphills. So I always love the days going into town because there's next to no food in the bag, <laughs> like half a liter of water left, just super light bag. You get to just you feel like you're flying. It's really nice. Patagonia, 50 miles right there. A little bit of a bummer. Uh, the last three miles is a roadwalk. <laughs> Did not know that. So this is the last bit of trail for a little bit. Sad day. All right, so doing this roadwalk and something I forgot to think about is Border Patrol. Because um, they are dickheads. And absolute just dickheads. And so a little bit concerned right now. There was one that just passed by and he didn't spin around or anything like that. But yeah. Just don't really want to deal with that. Um, I don't understand why they need to be, you know, a dick to everybody all the time. But part of living in southern Arizona, if I want to go anywhere, I get to go through a border patrol checkpoint and be like, yes, I live here. So welcome to Arizona, where you have to worry about longhorn bulls falling off of a cliff and hitting your car. <laughs> It's always something weird out here. <laughs>